Georgia, at the intersection of Europe and Asia, home to a culture almost as old as the mountains that define these lands. But Putin's homophobic crackdown on queer rights and his call up for the Ukrainian front line have motivated over a million Russians to flee to Georgia. But Georgia has its own troubles. The mob attacked us, it was quite huge. It was like tens of thousands of people. And is Georgia's rainbow community safe? When you are queer, you are scared in this country. Slav Ukraini and the Pop Russia right next to it. So it's a summary of the right side of history. Yeah. You here? Nat is Russian. Yeah, all right. They fled from St. Petersburg last year and now calls Georgia's capital Tbilisi home. At least for now. Another fuck Putin. Putin and a dig drawing. Yeah. Mm. Mm, queer. <laughs> queer. I'm In not purple. sure. Is it, is it pro or anti? I can't quite work that out. It's more of a pro, you I know. Purple pro. is kind of queer color. That's so nice, yeah. You are not welcome. Uh, Nat is one of over a million Russians to have fled into Georgia since the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. So here's another yeah. one. What's this one say? Russians go home again, yeah. Oh, and there's actually an answer, uh, which is Nuladna. It's like, okay then. When you see that, does that make you feel like you should go back to Russia? Uh, it makes me question whether I should stay here, but it doesn't make me question whether I should go back to Russia. This is a decided question for mm. me. I am not going back uh, if, you know, nothing changes radically. Why wouldn't you go? Why can't you go home now? Well, a uh, very basic reason is because it's just simply unsafe there. Nat is a queer, non-binary, trans person. Oh, I think it's always been around. Mm. Like, and in Putin's think, Russia, where so-called uh, traditional Russia family is, values are a pillar of his regime, me, Nat um, doesn't feel welcome. Despite the graffiti, the locals here in Tbilisi are mostly welcoming of Russians. Let's just stop for some lunch. But with some conditions. These are the rules for entering the restaurant. Ah. These are mainly about uh, disapproving of the war and the occupation uh, that is held by Russia, both in Ukraine and in Georgia. And how do you feel when, as a Russian, when you read something like that, just <laughs> at, a, at a restaurant? Uh, I mean, I it's... do agree to all of this. So, and I suppose, you know, I support these statements by entering the country, all in all. And let's go inside. Yeah, we definitely will. Being not persecuted do that. over nationality is relatively new for Nat, but being persecuted for sexuality is unfortunately not. Your experience in Russia as a queer person and for other LGBTQ people in Russia, what's going on, what's it like in there at the moment? It's never been easy and it's getting progressively worse, uh, rapidly worse. People can get beaten up for even looking queer, not exactly openly identifying as queer, but even in my progressive and liberal communities, of course, uh, I face a lot of misunderstanding, homophobia, transphobia, and oh, sometimes it even comes from unexpected places, like wouldn't expect it from my family at some point, for example, but this is what happened to me. How did they feel about you leaving Russia? Uh, about this, they were supportive. My dad, more than my mom, he thought that the destiny for me is to leave anyways. It was even before the war, it was just generally connected with his idea that Russia is not the country for success. Russia is not the country for a good life. If a person, you know, mm. wants any degree of freedom. For much of Vladimir Putin's reign, he's often blamed the West for corrupting his country's morals. 
Посмотрите, что они делают со своими собственными народами. Разрушение семьи, культурной и национальной идентичности, извращение, издевательство над, над детьми вплоть до педофилии объявляются нормой, нормой их жизни. Just last year, the Kremlin expanded a law that cracks down even further on LGBTIQ plus rights. The so-called gay propaganda law not only bans promoting homosexuality, but also anything that, in their words, normalizes it. So that basically bans being queer. Yeah, it's kind of. So, I mean, uh, it's a game of chance. Uh, if you're deciding to still keep living openly, it's just a matter of time and luck if they come for you personally. Worryingly for Georgia, there's been talk from hardline pro-Russian political figures of introducing a similar gay propaganda law here. Geographically, Georgia lies between the East and the West. Politically, it straddles the same divide between European freedoms and authoritarian Russia. Before Russia's war against Ukraine, it invaded Georgia in 2008. While it's today a frozen conflict, Russia still occupies about 20% of the country. And before that, Georgia endured almost 200 years of Imperial Russian, then Soviet Union occupation. Georgia gained independence as the USSR crumbled, and today it's a young democracy with European Union aspirations. And although Georgia has opened its borders to LGBT refugees, it wasn't long ago that Georgia was reported to be one of the world's most homophobic countries. Dadu is 45 years old and grew up when Georgia was part of the Soviet Union. Being gay in the USSR was not easy. I saw her 19-year-old daughter, Lana, is also queer. So, what's it like as a queer person in Georgia for you to live? Very, very difficult. The most biggest problem for us, for people who live in Georgia and for us queer people, that our government, they are not doing anything at all. Right. Um, they are not protecting us. They are not doing really any, any. What would you like to see them do? Uh, for example, to have some strong law for us. In law, there are kind of one sentences about robotic uh, month. Anti-discrimination. Discrimination, but it doesn't work at all. What sort of problems do people face? What have you experienced yourself, maybe first? Oh, of all? Yeah. I don't have any some kind of special experience. But why? Because I'm hiding. Because um, I can't uh, tell anyone to, that I am queer person. When you are. Queer, you are scared. First of all, you are scared in this country. And when, when you are scared for years and years and years, yeah, she's it's, young. It's tired. I'm not young. It's really tired. I grew up in Soviet Union. Yeah, they have good reason to be scared. In 2013, a small group of queer activists, seen here hiding in this yellow bus, tried to hold the country's first demonstration for International Day Against Homophobia. They were violently attacked by a mob estimated in the tens of thousands, including members of the Orthodox Church. And just two years ago, in 2021, a planned Pride event was cancelled over safety concerns. Still, a mob stormed the offices of the Tbilisi Pride organisers and beat up journalists, one who later died. The attackers were from a right-wing group with reported links to Russia. Yeah. 
This clip, filmed by local television, shows the mob was egged on by members of the Georgian Orthodox Church. And just last month, a Pride event was mobbed. It happened right here at this park. The Georgian people have this kind of thing that if you stay quiet, we stay quiet. Like if you don't say anything... You can do everything yeah. at home. Okay, I mean this idea that you can just live your life at home, don't bring it on the street, don't, um, what's the word they use, the propaganda, don't try and convince other people. Does it, is that important to you? Does it matter? It's Would important. you like to be having it's demonstration? It's important for me because I have right to exist. You should not tell me that uh, if I wear some rainbow thing, it is propaganda. It's not, it's uh, it's my choice. I ha I can wear whatever Don't I want. Don't wear this or something. Yeah, it's like, uh, and they are telling that, oh, you are like giving our children some bad uh, uh, habits and you are like, uh, showing uh, my children something bad. It, like, uh, I'm not doing anything by existing. Like, you exist, like everyone else exists, so why can't, why can't I? And do you think these sentiments, the, this, this idea, is, is homegrown in Georgia, or is it, is it being encouraged by, by Putin and the Kremlin's expansion no, of not Putin. Russian it, ideas? It comes, no, it comes from long, long years ago. Yeah. Putin was kid, maybe, <laughs> when it was here already in Georgia. Georgian life and politics is dominated by religion. Over 80% of people here follow the Georgian Orthodox Church, though only about a quarter are said to actively participate. In Russia, Putin has aligned his rule and values to those of the church. Georgia's government seems to be doing the same. And those conservative values that focus on God, family and traditional gender roles run deep. Especially amongst the older male population. body <laughs> Gia is a singer, a poet, and a regular in media debates about traditional values, where he's well known for his anti LGBT views. When some church people say you, you must use violence or force to stop pride marches, do you agree with that? And why? In July, the Georgian Orthodox Church was the latest voice to call for the adoption of the Russian-style gay propaganda laws. Do you think that the, the talk of having anti-LGBT propaganda laws in Georgia, is it an influence for Russian Putin values? <laughs> They say Georgia is not influenced by Russia, but could their homophobic views influence Georgia's desire to join the EU, where sexual freedoms and rights are protected? LGBT 
Ara, ara wa khiyar. No, 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 no. Europa nelnela guaparebs sakartvelos rogorts orthodoxalur kveqanas ar arsebobs, ar arsebobs. Australia shi da sakartveloshi qvela kaikats gaumarjos da vashkats vichebs ra. There's a palpable tension over Georgia moving west with Europe or east with Russia. And gay rights are just one of the battle lines. The governing Georgian Dream Party has applied to join the EU, but it's also accused of sabotaging its own application. Earlier this year, they tabled a so-called foreign agents bill. With the aim of controlling civil society, it was seen as a carbon copy of the same law in Russia. The bill was met with fierce resistance on Tbilisi streets and promptly shelved for now. But it raises the question, how much is Georgia following Russia's lead? Oh, hi. Hey, Georgi? how are you? Hi. Hey, Georgi. So this is the famous Clara Bar? Oh, yeah. Georgi Kikonishvili is a gay activist. OK, let's go and have a look. And the co-founder of one of Tbilisi's few queer bars. Thank you. Why do you think they are trying to bring in these Putin authoritarian rules? I think that this foreign agents law, this anti-LGBT propaganda law, and all these steps, sometimes I really think that are uh, done with the aim to sabotage the Georgia's uh, EU aspirations and the EU candidate status of Georgia. But sometimes then I think that maybe they are just threatened by Russia. While only Georgia's ruling party knows why it's toying with these Russian-style laws, critics like Georgi say it has to do with the party's business interests with Russia. <laughs> Keeping the EU at arm's length could help protect those interests. That's why I think that this Russian-type authoritarianism, they start with limiting the sexuality and especially the LGBTQI people. But I think that they will fail. They, they, they he says they'll fail because Georgia is changing. It's been reported sometimes that Georgia is one of the most homophobic countries in the world. Is that true? I don't think so. It uh, used to be very homophobic years and decades ago. I think that the, one of the reasons why Georgia has such a label is because of the attacks which uh, happened during the International Day Against Homophobia. In 2013? In, in 2013, yes. Mm. And yes, of course, this uh, day remains as one of the most traumatic days uh, in our lives because we were attacked by this uh, mob. But this day also marked a very huge turning point for Georgia and Georgia society general, and for us as well, because we all realized that we were facing a very huge problem, which was implemented there artificially by the Russian propaganda through the Georgian Orthodox Church. I see. But from Russia, you think it's the, yes, the yes, idea originated yes, in Russia? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the uh, hate groups, the far right groups, they are directly and indirectly uh, financed uh, and led uh, by the Russia. So is it going to be possible for you to have a pride march in Tbilisi? Yes, it's absolutely go going to be possible. But the problem is that the current government, just, they just don't want it to happen. Right. They're playing this double game as if being like pro-Western, pro-EU, etc., etc. But in fact, what they play right now is, is clearly a Russian game. Georgia's fledgling democracy has tasted freedom. But with Russia still a threat and the government seemingly sliding towards Moscow's orbit, Georgia's future hangs on the precipice. There's been talk about the LGBT propaganda law. What would you do if they did bring a law in like that, if they did ban what they call LGBT propaganda? Would you stay in the country? Would you leave? 
Well, my, I myself am queer and my mom, she has this like plan to just go to Europe. And uh, well, she wants me to go there too, but it's like, I don't I want to. I much times, let's go, let's go. I she don't want, want just... to go there because first of all, I see some kind of future, my future here. But if that kind of thing happened, I would definitely had to leave this country because uh, I don't want to live in danger. I'm tired of living in danger, to be honest. For a big part of my life, I felt out of place, not only as a queer person, but just maybe as a Russian citizen who's uncomfortable in their country. But you have this thought that maybe the world is so big, maybe there's still some place where I belong. And I feel like what happened with the war and with the immigration that I am facing is that I have to cope with the thought that maybe nothing is going to feel like home ever. I think this is what was robbed from us all.